Money crawl on a popper? Let's do it. Hey, fish heads, welcome back to another riveting episode of Jekyll Bait Spray Session. I'm your hostess with the mostess, Jen Cravasi. It is a TGIF kind of a day. It's hot as blazes outside, so the best thing I know to do is to sit right here, hang out with me this afternoon, and let's build something cool together. Today, we're going to knock out two birds with one stone. I've had two very prominent questions over the last few weeks. First being, can you please paint the money crawl? Sure, I would be happy to paint the money crawl for you guys. It's a crawl. It's just colors, and we're going to go through it step by step today. The other question that I've been getting is how I clear coat with KBS, how I dip this and keep all that from pooling up, keep all that liquid. So we're going to show you a little trick on that as well. It's not that difficult. You'll have it down in no time flat, I'm certain of that. This is a holographic popper. So one of the things that we're not going to do on this is put on a complete opaque layer of titanium white. We're going to do a pearlized white. We're going to keep it fairly light on the primer because I really kind of want this stuff to show through and you guys can probably see a little bit of that. It's going to pick up better on my other camera, but this is a holographic popper blank. It's pressing replica. And shake it up. Full of 80s songs today. Don't know why. But we're going to keep this real light. I'll coat it a little bit more on the top, but let those sides just kind of do what they want to do. Have just a little bit left in there. Basically for this pattern, your colors can be kind of what you want them to be. I have a kind of predefined selection of colors that I like to use for this. I like my red violets, I like my cool blues, my, my olive greens. And then we're going to put the cross stencil over it. And it's not quite as difficult as you might think that it is. I've got all that out. The first color that we're going to put in here is going to be a little Maui blue. I've been really addicted to this color lately too. I like it for my rainbow trout, but I also like it. And you're noticing that, um, that I'm not heat setting this in between kind of want the uh, the colors to blend into this pearlescent and we want to kind of stay light so I'm just randomly placing these colors they don't have to be exactly where I'm placing them on your bait that's the beauty of this pattern they can be a little bit different but I'm gonna do four basic colors on this and then we're gonna add the cross stencil and instead of using my own stencils today, we're going to use Russ Allen's wheel and see how that does for us. To offset that blue, I'm going to lay in some Sunset Red 5118. I'm going to get my pressure down a little bit. I'm running about 15 on my pressure. And we don't want to overkill these colors. We want to make sure each color has got plenty of room to bring itself to life. And we got less real estate, well, different, different sort of real estate on this than when I say real estate, how much coverage we're going to get on the bait, how much space there is to actually make our pattern. That's all I'm talking about. Don't want to confuse anybody and think that I'm buying property. But we don't want to take up too much space with any one color. So we want to really try and limit where we put our four colors. I 
Now I'm going to just do green as an accent on this. And maybe a little on the belly. And again, this pattern is cool, but as far as where you want to place your different colors on the bait, that's up to you guys. You can even do it in different colors. Don't let me stop you. This is kind of a, a neat way to experiment with what can look potentially good on any lure. If you want something in stained water that's going to be super attractive, very loud, color-wise, and an attention grabber, this is one of those patterns. And yes, the question that I'm most frequently asked about crawfish on poppers is, why a crawfish? Because I've never seen a crawfish on top of the water. Well, you're right, um, crawfish are bottom dwellers. However, if you ever fish river systems and you're fishing skinny water, especially when the crays are breeding, those, those crayfish will have a tendency to move around a little bit. I have seen them skit the top of the water. We'll even do a little green in there instead of red. All right, I think we're ready to give it a, a heat set here. We've got orange, a little green, a little blue. And what really sets this apart is when we start adding the, uh, I got a little overspray there. And this is on 15, I could probably bring that down to five and do a little bit better. But I had just a little quick blast of air there that I don't necessarily want. All right, after we're finished with the first initial heat set, I've got some wicked jet black, just a couple of drops. We're gonna bring the pressure down even more. I'm spraying, I went from 15 to 10 on my pressure there. So we are gonna put a little collar on. And this is part of Russ's stencil. I've sectioned it out. And just make that notch. There's, there's a hood and collar on, on every crawfish. And that's something that you wanna kinda be mindful of. Get the excess paint off of that. And then, let's see here. Probably do it. Well, we could probably just go ahead and do a straight line on it. That's fine. Nah. No straight lines. We're going to do this little piece right here. I'm holding my finger underneath to hold this st steady. And we're going to make a few of these. Three ought to do. Now we've got our segments defined. You always want to start with the top. Just like every other crawl video you're going to see me do, I always start with the top because that makes it easy to line the sides up, the side segments on both sides to where they're going to look the exact same or very close. We're going to take these gator clips and helping hands and slide that over. And I'm going to get my excess paint off. And then I want to get just a little segment Let's try and find the segment we want. I think I can use these. So we will actually let's start by finishing this collar around the eye. So I've just got a little segment here that I've pulled off. We're going to line that up. Let's bring it back this way. Line it up and get all the way to the edge there with that just to continue that line from the collar around to the to the mouth of this bait we'll use that flip it over on the other side for the other one and then on this 
bring this over. Line it up where your lines are. Always want to stick to the edge of your stencil and not spray too much on the bait itself. Now with this one I want to come down here just a little bit more. Just grab that edge and maybe a little more. There we go. And now I can bring this around. Awesome. And one more segment. We can line that up pretty well. So now what you see is that. I tell you what, for as much as I airbrush, and this is day in and day out, that California Air Tools air compressor, best recommendation ever. Um, thank you, Gerald Novick, time and time again for recommending I get one of these. They're fantastic. They allow me to spray pretty much quietly for about 30 minutes, unless I'm going back to back to back. So I'm just still super impressed. I've had it, gosh, seven months now, six, seven months. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So we've scraped the paint off of this. I'm just going back to this other side. And we're going to bring this around. And just continue that collar on around to there. And I've scraped this off so that we can do the other side. run it like this. Come on now. There we go. I try to be as light-handed as I can be. And it sounds to me as though there might be a wee tiny bit of clog. In my airbrush. So that's something that I'm going to want to address here at some point in the very near future. And then we'll and like that. Bring that around. And then one more time. And voila, we have our segments on both sides. This is dry to the touch. And I'm just clamping this one down and then what I'll do is I'll bring this back to the center, ease this back to where it just sits against the base of that. We don't want it to sit too hard on it. There we go. Just like that. The next thing we need to do is just put the uh, bottom segments on and we can use a straight line for that. I'm just going to use this piece. I always like more segments on the bottom than I do the top, but that's just me. Real light spray. Don't need to kill it. There we go. Then you want to check in on the sides and make sure that you kind of line up as best you can. So if you've gotten, if you've fallen a little bit short on your lines, you can go ahead and clean that up. Just real light, super light, because you don't want to continue this line and you always want to aim left and bring it in. Remember most baits are curved so it's not going to be a huge deal. There we go. And then just add a little bit of 
detailing on one side just get a little shade in and the other cool thing about doing that when you put a little bit of shading in on that side is that you do if you do have any mistakes it'll cover them up it's also very cool and then just run this on the same same side just yeah it's getting a little bit loose that actually looks pretty good maybe just dress this one up right here bring that up everything else looks pretty good maybe this one there we go and now we have a continual segment around I'm going to pull that out of the blinding lights for you guys and kind of walk around this bait with you guys quick heat set again it was a real light spray so it's pretty much dry to the touch and then we're going to add some cool detailing to it. We're going to be adding just a little bit of random splatter to this. Now, if I had done white random splatter, which I do like on that, but we're going to dot this, the edges of these segments white, so it was a no-go on this one. But if we had done that, and I, I like the paintbrush method, others like to, now I have... I have done it using this and you take the tip off and you get real super low pressure like two or three and just flick this and it works out the same but then sometimes you have a mess to clean up because your tip is exposed and nah. so I just use a paintbrush as long as you don't have too heavy of a paint load on this you're, you're not going to mess your bait up you want to flick it off on paper if you have it so but I already have black loaded in the chamber here so I'm just going to dip my paintbrush tip in there and you can see it's loaded pretty good almost too good I'm going to slide this bait off to the side for a second run that down you can see that I'm getting some drops off of there and then once you have a good amount of drops off you just go ahead and flick your paintbrush tip and aim it right towards your bait you should with a bait that's fairly small like this be able to accomplish random splatter in one paintbrush tip load just a little extra there scoop up what's left on the paper and get the rest of that down you don't need to overdo it because you still want those colors to shine through all this plus you're going to be adding a little bit of detailing on the segments as well if you have a little like a Dixie cup or I use a little bit of water here for my watercolors so it works for airbrush paint as well if you just soak that that way you won't have to worry about paint drying on there we are gonna heat set this real quick and then I'm gonna add some really cool details to the edges of this which is what makes it the money crawl it's really it's a cool standout pattern I love doing it you guys are welcome to have some fun with it. I'd like to see what you guys can come up with. Make it your own for sure. We are finishing up the detailing. And again, you guys are welcome to skip past this point. But before you do, before you do, I think maybe I should do a uh, a giveaway it's been a while since I've done a giveaway so if you guys are interested in acquiring this little gem of crawfish goodness leave me a comment below I would like to know what your favorite pattern is to paint and you have to be subscribed to the channel that's a given i don't think they even let you comment on stuff unless you're subscribed right is that is that right i, I don't pay it i don't usually do giveaways um it's more of a teaching thing than anything else but hey it's been a while i'm getting close to 5,000 subs so i would be happy to give this little guy away And 
just a few dots in there. And the one thing that we did on this side, we didn't necessarily do on the other side. I'm going to add a couple more larger dots. And then do the same on this side. A couple of big dots up top. Put one big one right there. A couple smaller ones. And we're pretty much there. We need to heat set this. Need to get some eyes in it. I'm going to show you how to dip it. Generally for a craw pattern, I like traditional black eyes, but for this pattern, I'm going to be using, I don't know if the camera can even get close enough. You guys see that? There's a lot of glitter in the middle of this. We're going to use these. It's pretty cool. Got our eyes in. They look great. Thank you, John at Jetson. Just a quick walk around. I'm going to put my name on this and dump it in some clear coat. Time to dip it. We've got my name on it. We've got the eyes on it. We've finished up our pattern. KBS in a pickle jar. Dill pickles. First things first. I put my drip wire in. My hanger. It's just a uh, 18 gauge aluminum wire. I don't use lead. And I'm going to pinch this together so I have a pretty good grip on it. It's not going to slip off of here. And if I do it right, crimp that down good, it's not going to move as much. And I can kind of move this around once I have stuff on it. The next thing we're going to do, get our tail drip wire on. Have that close at hand. Not actually put it on yet, but have it close at hand. Dip it. See if I can come over the top with this, give you guys a better look at it. Now, I'm going to come up at an angle, but it's going to naturally do that. So here's what I do I take just as gentle as you can, I pull this over the edge on both sides. Get that excess off. Then we're going to do one more step with it. Once this goes on, pull it away from the... Oh, see that coming off? All that excess is going to drip away from the mouth. I'm going to hold it there for about five seconds. That should be plenty. Turn that around. All my excess is out. I've got this fine and dandy. And we're all set to hang it up. And we're golden. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the money crawl. Thanks for watching today. I'm going to show you this again when it's all done. Have a great weekend or whenever it is that you watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And I would love to hear from you. And if you want to win this bait, leave me a comment. I want to know what your favorite pattern to spray is. And you have to be subscribed to the channel. And I will pick a winner in five days. Today is the 19th of July, 2019. 7, 19, 2019. I'm going to pick this winner on the 24th of July. Good luck.